The Nigeria Police Force has extradited the former chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Maina, from Niger Republic to Abuja. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the Kogi State Assembly has urged the governor of the state, Yaya Bello, to contest the 2023 presidential election. The lawmaker has made the call after passing a motion to this effect during plenary on Wednesday in Lokoja. The House Majority Leader, Hassan Abdullahi, while moving the motion, said the call was predicated on the sterling performance of Velu since he resumed office in 2016. Part of the resolution passed by the House read in part. We, the Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members of the Kogi State House of Assembly, upon due deliberation of proper motion therefore, do hereby unanimously make and pass a vote of confidence on His Excellency, Governor Yaya Bello of Kogi State. At number 9, the National Basketball Association announced on Wednesday that 48 players have tested positive for COVID-19. This is a dramatic increase over the zero positive tests reported during last season's quarantine in Florida. The league said the positive tests are the result of 543 tests carried out between November 24th to 30th as the NBA is set to begin pre-season games in nine days. Under the league's tough new COVID-19 protocols, a player who tests positive has to refrain from workouts for at least 10 days and more if he's showing symptoms. At number 8, the Senate on Wednesday asked the Federal Ministry of Health, the National Abovirus and Vector Research Center, to as a matter of urgency investigate the outbreak of a strange ailment suspected to be yellow fever in communities in Benue State that has claimed many lives. The Senate also called on the Federal Ministry of Health to urgently mobilize focal persons to the affected areas to complement the efforts of the Benue State Government in ascertaining the nature of the ailment. The Upper Chamber urged the Nigeria Center for Disease Control to promptly put up surveillance to contain the disease and see to the treatment of victims and protect others from further contracting it. At number 7, former French President Valérie Giscard d'Estaing, a leading advocate of European integration who led his country into a new modern era, has died of COVID-19. The late French leader's family said he died on Wednesday. Giscard, who had been in the hospital several times in recent months for heart problems, died at the age of 94, surrounded by his family at the family home in the lower region. The family said his funeral would be strictly private according to his wishes. French President Emmanuel Macron paid tribute to his predecessor, saying Giscard's seven-year term had transformed France. At number six, for the second time in two days, the Northern Elders Forum has asked President Mohamed Buhari to resign, saying he has failed to secure Nigerians. The forum spokesman, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, stated this last night in a live television program. He said it is disappointing that over after five years of being in office, Buhari still hasn't delivered on the promises he made to Nigerians when he was first elected in 2015. Baba Ahmed noted that Buhari had asked his predecessor, ex-president Goodluck Jonathan, to resign in 2013 over growing insecurity in the country and so, it is not out of place to demand that he resigns over the same security challenge. At number 5, yesterday, a federal high court in Abuja granted an order restraining Professor Kemebra Dikumo Ponde, Mr. Kairo Ojobo and others from performing the functions of the board of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Justice Ahmed Mohamed, in a ruling on an application by a civil society organization called Forum for Accountability and Good Governance, restrained them from parading themselves as board members of the NDDC. By this order of the court, the members of the NDDC board are restrained from performing the functions of the board pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice, which is fixed for December 8, 2020. At number four, the number of people living in extreme poverty will increase by more than 32 million in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development said in a report released on Thursday. According to UNCTAD, between October 2019 and October 2020, the economic growth forecast for least developed countries was revised sharply downwards from 5 to minus 0.4%. The UN said this is the worst economic outcome in 30 years for this group of countries and represents a significant reversal of the economic and social progress achieved in recent years, including in terms of poverty and social outcomes. At number three, the Federal High Court in Abuja has granted permission to a lawyer, Mr. Ademola Adedipe, for permission to withdraw from the two billion naira money laundering case involving a former chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Mena. Adedipe, who was appearing for the second defendant in the case, Common Input Property and Investment Limited, a firm said to be owned by Mena, had hinged his decision to quit the case on the ground that his brief had not been perfected by the client. 
Acknowledging the application on Thursday, the judge issued an order discharging the lawyer from the case. At number two, the Nigeria Police Force has filed a suit at the Federal High Court in Abuja, seeking for an order stopping the various state judicial panels of inquiry probing allegations of rights abuses and other acts of brutality of the disbanded SAS and other police tactical units. The first urged the courts to restrain the Attorney General of the 36 states of the Federation and their various panels of inquiry from going ahead with the probe. A total of 104 defendants were joined in this suit comprising of the Attorney General of the Federation, the National Human Rights Commission which set up the Independent Investigative Panel sitting in Abuja, the Attorney General of the States and Chairman of the States Panels. The Nigeria Police Force through their lawyer Mr. O. M. Ateobi argued in the fresh suit that the state government lacked the power to constitute the panels to investigate activities of the police force and its officials in the conduct of their statutory duties. Finally, at number one, the Nigeria Police Force has extradited the former chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Mena, from Niger Republic to Abuja. Mena was apprehended in Niamey, the capital of Niger Republic, on Monday by operatives of the Nigeria Police Force, International Criminal Police Organization, National Central Bureau, Abuja, in collaboration with their Nigerian counterparts. He was brought to Abuja on Thursday and is currently in police custody. The former pension boss will be interrogated before being handed over to the EFCC or remanded in the Nigerian Correctional Service Facility in Kuje. The Commissioner of Police, Interpol, NCB, Garba Uma, confirmed Mena's extradition. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.